And and the villain begins with a scientific argument, and that's uh, consistent with his modern theories. And the modern centuries are the ones where we are open to science. And before the modern age, uh, societies uh, mostly restricted scientists science. If if they weren't absolutely closed to it, uh, they wanted it to be contained under something higher than science. Uh, science seeks the truth, and older societies thought that the search for the truth was important, but more important uh, was piety, that is, true religion, really loving God, and patriotism, that is, truly loving your country, uh, that those uh, high and noble things uh, were what was uh, most important, and the greater truth beyond uh, any truth that society would discover. This, This was the a standard attitude before the modern centuries, and if our modern centuries are distinctive, for one reason, uh, one reason is that we we prefer scientific truths uh, to those uh, to those noble things, or or some people's idea of what is nobler, uh, and we see uh, Mandeville pointing us to that at the very start of his text that uh, what science requires. Uh, is an attitude uh, that doesn't make a distinction between the noble and the vile in order to to dissect a a living thing and to learn the truth about how it works. Uh, You have to forget that it's disgusting. Uh, You have to put that away, you have to get over that. Uh, So the the natural human tendency uh, to favor uh, what's beautiful and noble uh, over what's uh, unimportant or negligible or seems small uh, and disgusting, you have to put that o- you have to put that normal reaction away in order to learn uh, biology to be a scientist of living things, uh, and uh, the. Modern world embraces that attitude, but the the pre modern world, uh, earlier centuries. Uh, rejected it. And Mandeville takes that here to its political conclusion, uh, that you should look at the, uh, in order to understand politics, you should turn off your sense of shame and be willing to look at uh, what's uh, vile and disgusting and not noble uh, and understand uh, the effect of it and, in fact, how it contributes to the life of the community and therefore becomes noble again, even though in a more obvious way. It's the opposite of what's noble. So in a similar way, the pre-modern world insisted on established religions and no no freedom of religion, that it was the the duty of government by the pre-modern logic of politics. It was was a necessary duty of government to to raise people in a common religion because then the instruction would be that much more powerful, it would be stronger, it would have a bigger effect on people's souls if everyone had to participate and the whole society got behind the project of promoting the truths of religion. Uh, this is the only logical way to arrange things if you think that virtue is necessary. Then, then you would see, uh, just using common sense, that uh, most people don't have enough virtue. Most people give in to, to, to the temptation to put their private good above the common good. And it doesn't seem to be our natural ability uh, to, be, to be virtuous and patriotic. Uh, we have to be taught. And therefore, the, the government can't be casual about the means of teaching us. Therefore, the government has to support religion in the strongest way. Uh, or the whole society won't have the means to live. It will uh, either collapse or be so bad that nobody wants it to continue. But in the modern centuries, uh, we feel more fundamentally that virtue is not necessary, that that we can get by without it, and and perhaps we shouldn't be hypocritical about it, and perhaps it would be better not to promote it in the same way that it would be better not to block the capillaries, even though they're sort of wet and ugly and disgusting parts of our bodies. It would be better to keep them healthy, uh, because that's the only way the body can live. Can't just live by 
uh, the beautiful outside skin alone. Uh, it has to uh, live by the disgusting underneath. And uh, that's true with the human character, too, uh, that uh, our vices are what make life go. Uh, and therefore, we can tolerate freedom of religion. People can make up their own minds about how to pray to God because we do not need to train them in a higher virtue because that that selfless virtue is not necessary. We don't have to overcome the natural human tendency to think first of ourselves because communities can survive and even thrive and perhaps even do better if we allow those individual liberties. So the things that are distinctive of modern life, uh, science, uh, individual liberty, uh, depend on this prior decision that uh, communities do not need virtues. They can get by uh, by making use of their... See, itself vices. is also uh, emblematic of the modern age. It marks what it means to be modern. It helps us explain why we're different from earlier uh, from earlier ages. Uh, but democracy means uh, somehow setting the power by everybody and therefore letting most people set the tone. But if a society requires virtue, then it needs to recognize that most people are not virtuous. Most people do not uh, give up what's good for themselves. Most people are too easily tempted to do what's in their private interest instead of what's for the common good. Only a few people will ever be found you know, that go the other way, that can put aside their private interest for the public one, and therefore only a few people should be allowed real power if you want the government, if you want the society to be healthy. This is the pre-modern logic. So we cannot have democracy well, because... Uh, ordinary people are, are vulgar and a bit vile. And that's contrary to what government needs. But if to be vulgar and a bit vile is not only permissible, and not only okay, not only allowed, but also helpful for those who really understand how things work, uh, then one can, in fact, one should have a democracy. Uh, if ordinary human nature... Uh, even though it is self selfish, if ordinary human nature is good enough and uh, properly used to make a good community, uh, then ordinary human nature, which is he held by ordinary people, uh, should be the foundation of power, and we should let everybody vote. Uh, and and again, uh, the point is that, that there's a certain logic to modern politics that everything can be traced back to the decision, do you need virtue for common life or don't you? And the the pre-modern world said, yes, we need it, and therefore uh, said we must uh, suppress science, we must have a common religion, and we must have a limited government. All those things follow from that first decision. And in the modern age, we make the opposite decision. Uh, we can tolerate vice, we can make use of vice. We will live better if we're open and, and easy about uh, vice and just practice a little human cleverness about making use of it. And therefore, all the opposite things. Uh, flourishing in open science that can look for truth wherever it is found. Uh, that follows from that first decision that we do not need virtue as a social resource. Uh, freedom of religion follows. If we don't need virtue as a social research, then resource, then we don't need uh, a publicly supported, uh, unanimous, official religion in order to create that uh, virtuous resource. And democracy, too. Uh, if human nature is useful, uh, if human nature is good enough to power a thriving, flourishing, healthy society, uh, then we should allow human nature, uh, the common people who just have human nature and nothing uh, all that much better, uh, they should be allowed their share of power, and they could be even the ultimate source of power uh, in the modern democracies. And Mandeville's textbook puts that argument in an extremely strong way, 
And so it was a chance for us to understand what's different about modern life and so to understand ourselves.